When you picture your life in 10 years from now, what type of life do you hope you're living? Well, the city you live in can have a huge impact on the lifestyle you live and your quality of life, ultimately. So in this video, we're gonna look at some of the major differences between living in Halifax, Nova Scotia and living in Vancouver, British Columbia. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so let's check it out. So for me, I've had the benefit of living in both of these cities. I was born and raised here in Halifax and have lived back here again since 2019. But for six years, I lived in Vancouver working at the University of British Columbia. So I have a great personal insight into what it's like living in both of these cities. So let's get into the major differences that you would only really know if you've lived in each one of these cities. The first major difference between Halifax and Vancouver is looking at the roads and the traffic. Now in Vancouver, it's becoming mostly bike lane on the roads. There are bike lanes everywhere and they really try to cater to bikers all across the city. Now this is great if you're a biker and you're looking for a safe place to drive and, and maybe have your commute to work or you're just somebody who likes driving around bikers. But if you try to bike to work in Halifax, you're gonna be in direct competition with the cars on the road next to you because we do not have very good infrastructure when it comes to bike lanes or biker safety. And that's why we all drive to work. And now when it comes to traffic, Halifax, you can truly say, has a rush hour. During that four to five time of day, it can get really busy and really congested on the streets and highways. And it can be kind of miserable. But when you look at Vancouver, uh, most of the day is rush hour. Where if you want to go anywhere, basically any time of day, the streets are pretty congested and it's going to take you a while to get any amount of distance. I know every time we go back to visit Vancouver, we get slammed in the face. We think we remember how bad the traffic is, but we really just don't do it justice in our memory. The traffic's pretty bad. So if you're a biker, Vancouver might be the place for you. If you're looking for a quick and easy commute, Halifax has got Vancouver beat for sure. The second thing we're gonna look at in comparing the two cities is looking at their natural landscapes. Now, when you talk about Vancouver, you're truly talking about a sea to sky experience. You have the ocean on one side where you're dipping your toes in the Pacific Ocean, talking about beautiful beaches and coastlines. And then not far away, you're gonna be standing at the base of a mountain looking up at a truly wonderful thing to behold with white caps and the trails all up the side, everything. But the only downside is that it can actually be kind of hard to get there or take a while to get to these beautiful sites. Now let's look at Halifax. From basically anywhere in the city, you're about 30 to 40 minutes away from some sort of a natural beauty. Whether you're talking about arriving at a little fishing town where you can sit along the harbor, where you can basically have lobsters crawl up into your vehicle, or whether you're driving out to farmland where you feel like you can just exhale a little bit in the quaint country roads. And I know in particular, the density of population is much less in Halifax, where you can drive and basically anywhere along the highway, you're gonna see natural beauty. You're gonna see the trees and especially in fall, you're going to see all the colors of fall. Whereas in Vancouver, you feel like you can drive and drive and drive, and you're still driving through and past the suburbs. So the beauty is greater, greater peaks, greater heights to some degree in Vancouver, because you're going to have the ocean, you're going to have the mountains, and sometimes they're side by side. But in Halifax, you're going to get more access to that beauty, and it's something that's going to be accessible for most people. Next up, we're going to talk home prices. So this is one that obviously has a great disparity. Looking at Vancouver, as of September of this year, the average sale of a property was $1.2 million. As compared with Halifax, the average price as of September was $523,000. And so if you're a current homeowner, that might be great news for you in Vancouver because the asset that you may have bought 10, 15, 20 years ago is now worth a ton of money. But if you're looking to get into the property market, that makes the price tag pretty steep and pretty aggressive for Vancouver area. Now for Halifax, that means you're not sitting on as much equity or as much money if you're an existing homeowner, but it means that the price to get on the property ladder is much more accessible, although still a stretch for many and still a challenge in today's market. Let's look at what that means in terms of income. Well, according to RateHub, to buy a home in Vancouver in today's market, you're gonna to have to bring in an income of about $250,000 for the average property. Compare that to Halifax, 
the income needs to be $117,000 in order to afford the average home here. So for many, both of these numbers can be discouraging. For some people that makes Vancouver completely out of reach and it may make something like Halifax more aspirational or it may make you want to say, screw it, I'm moving to Costa Rica. And I'll also just add that these numbers go up and get worse when you talk about detached homes. So if you're picturing the white picket fence and a detached home, those numbers are gonna get even worse, even more aggressive. Up fourth, we're gonna look at the weather. So Vancouver is a place that really gets very little snow, but when it comes, it shuts down basically the entire city because there are no city services in place to really help you deal with it. Almost nobody has winter tires and even the city buses are not equipped to deal with the snow. So it doesn't come very often, and when it does, it's a guaranteed snow day. As compared with Nova Scotia, we get quite a bit of snow in the winters, but our city is really well equipped to deal with it. We have a lot of infrastructure in place to help with snow removal. Although it's not gone in the blink of an eye, within a day, basically all the streets in the entire city are cleared and salted and ready to drive on. And in some areas, it's within hours. It's gone and you can head to work or not. But a big reason why Vancouver doesn't get as much snow is because it's much more mild there. The winters are not nearly as harsh as you would experience here in Halifax. But again, something you'd only really appreciate if you've lived in both cities. Winter in Vancouver, almost constant clouds. You're not gonna see much of the sun for those winter months. Whereas in Halifax, it might be snowing one hour and then the next hour the sun is out and you can actually get the sun shining down on that snow. So it's a little bit more of a pick me up when you can actually see the sun to help you cope with the fact that you just got dumped on with snow. Spring comes really early in Vancouver. Sometimes at UBC, we'd see flowers starting to come up through the grass as early as early February, and people are out mowing the grass at the university campus. So spring comes real early, which means that the winter is done and you actually get that uplift once again in spirits uh, with signs of things to come and you're out of the cold weather by February, March, typically. Whereas in Nova Scotia, you're dealing with snow Definitely till April, potentially till May, when the temperatures will consistently start to get back up and you'll start to have some semblance of a spring. When it comes to summer, both places get warm and hot, but in Halifax, you're gonna deal with the humidity much more than in Vancouver. The warmth just feels different in Vancouver. It feels drier. It almost feels like a completely different type of heat. And both cities have a quite a nice fall, but again, it's hard to beat the fall in the Maritimes with how just how many deciduous trees we have where you get to see the full colors of fall and it's really something beautiful to see. And so although we typically think of Vancouver as the brighter, warmer climate, Halifax actually gets more sunny days per year than Vancouver does. That's something just to consider. Those cloudy winter days. Man. Number five, we're talking about public transit. In Halifax, that conversation is pretty quick. We have the bus. They've continued to try to expand the bus routes and making express routes to help people get into Dartmouth and Halifax quicker. It's come a long way even since when I was a kid, but still the only option for public transit is the bus and the bus routes and systems are not the best. In Vancouver, you have the buses and you have the SkyTrain system, which work pretty effectively together. And between these two things, you can get quite far distances and get there pretty effectively, pretty efficiently. Although you are gonna have to deal with doing all the math of the zones and which zones you're heading to. It's a little bit more complicated in Vancouver um, and figuring out which SkyTrain and which station to get on and which line you're going through, uh, whether you're going Expo or Canada line. And it's complicated because you can get more places and do more things on the public transit system. And even the fact that you can SkyTrain right from the airport all the way to downtown is a pretty nice feature for a city. The sixth difference that you're gonna encounter between Halifax and Vancouver is when it comes to insurance. See, car insurance in BC as a province is run by the province. Everything is centralized by the provincial government. So no matter which insurance distributor you go to, you're gonna get the same prices. You're gonna effectively get the same coverages. Now this takes away competition, but it does provide the same standard of what you're gonna get across the board. Now Nova Scotia, the car insurance is private which means that you could go to 10 different companies and get 10 different quotes based on the different insurances provided. This competition can lead to better pricing, but it also can lead to gouging. But in my experience, the cost of insurance for cars is far higher in Vancouver than what I can experience here living in Halifax. Then when it comes to health insurance in Vancouver or in BC as a province, once again, there are monthly premiums that you have to pay just to be part of the basic 
insurance coverage for the province. Whereas in, in Nova Scotia, there is no monthly premium. Uh, all of your insurance, all of your healthcare is completely free. Now, the second facet of it to look at is when you look at healthcare. In BC, you actually have to pay a monthly healthcare premium in order to get your basic healthcare coverage for yourself and your family. Now in Nova Scotia, there is no monthly premium. So it is actually less of a cost to live in Halifax in this way. Now that being said, it's less of a cost, but the care you're gonna get in Vancouver or BC as a whole is gonna be on a different level from what we're experiencing here in Nova Scotia. Although I don't have specifics, the wait times for specialists in Vancouver are far less than in Nova Scotia. And in Nova Scotia, now we have over 100,000 people who actually don't even have a family doctor. So that would be one major drawback of Nova Scotia is that our healthcare system has been stretched in the last five to 10 years, and it's only continued to get worse since 2020. And so bad that our premier recently invited all people to submit ideas in a contest for how we could actually improve the healthcare system in Nova Scotia. If that's not a sign of how bad things are, I don't know what is. The last thing we'll talk about today will be generally referred to as amenities. Vancouver has a much bigger population than Halifax. It has a more diverse population base, although Halifax is shifting drastically in the last five years. With that, you're gonna get far more diversity when it comes to lifestyle as well. You're gonna get more restaurants and better restaurants, quite frankly, in Vancouver than typically you're gonna experience here in Halifax. When it comes to nightlife and sports scene, Vancouver is gonna far outweigh Halifax. The amenities basically can't compare. In Halifax, you can live kind of the simple down home and affordable life. In Vancouver, you can get the glitz and glamor of the big city, but you're gonna have to pay the premium to live that life. So there you have it. So there it is, Vancouver versus Halifax. What do you think? Is there anything big that I missed comparing and contrasting these two cities? And which one sounds more appealing to you? Which lifestyle might fit? your next 10 years. My name is Chris Pickup. I'm a realtor with eXp Realty here in Halifax, Nova Scotia. If this video has been enlightening in any way, please give me a like. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please subscribe, come along for the journey. I'm here to talk about real estate and finding you the right situation for your life.